Welcome back to another round of The Recruiting Corner. I'm Joshua Zimmerman, your host. Want to welcome to the panel David Frank, Vice President of Athnet, also going to be our recruiting expert. How are you guys doing? Hey guys, uh, Josh, awesome. Glad to be here on The Recruiting Corner. Welcome, uh, welcome. Excited to get this thing going. Also, first time getting on video for the company, so everybody, take it easy. Don't, don't judge me too harshly. We'll take it lightly on you today. Awesome. All right, guys, we're going to cover a couple of things happening in the NCAA. So the NCAA has just wrapped up a board of directors meeting again just this Last past week. weekend. And uh, lots of big news coming out of there. Uh, President Mark Emmert is making some moves in the NCAA and pushing hard for some reform. Uh, most, one of the biggest pieces of legislation going is the $2,000 on top of the cost of full ride scholarships. So, uh, this is some really controversial legislation. The schools aren't happy about it, and they're letting the NCAA know. What they've decided is to push this for a vote until April. They'll decide about it in April. But I kind of wanted to get your, your feelings on what are the impacts of this $2,000 increase on scholarships, and how does it matter to uh, your normal college recruit? You know, I, I really think that I'm not sure what the NCAA is doing right now. Everyone knows that athletic departments, for the most part, run at deficits. And unfortunately, if you increase money, they've got to take it from somewhere else, which means that your lower tier sports are going to suffer. You're going to start seeing a lot of sports disappear from schools that just can't afford it so that they can pay to recruit uh, in that $2,000 mark. So you're going to see your top sports, your top athletes get the money, and you're going to see a lot of your smaller sports lose money. And it's, it's really unfortunate because there's a lot of opportunities out there that are going to go to waste. Yep, I agree. Uh, I think the NCAA, I applaud them trying to make changes, but they're going to have to think through this one a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, next up, more scholarship news from the NCAA. Uh, they are going to vote in February for multi-year scholarships. That means athletes will be able to sign their scholarships for three, four, five years, or their entire time of eligibility. So uh, this is big news, but again, it might be impacting the big money sports, but not necessarily your uh, equivalency sports. So, Josh, again, explain how these multi-year scholarships are going to impact recruits. I think you just made a great point in the fact that it is going to affect your top sports, your top athletes. Maybe if you're a star football player, you're going to come in and they're going to want to ink you to a deal because you, most of the time you're already getting a full ride scholarship anyways. They're just going to go ahead and say, here's five years. Um, it's not going to impact your lower tier sports so much simply because you may not be getting a full ride anyways. You may be only getting a partial scholarship. And for you guys, it may not be worth it to sign a multi-year multi scholarship at that point. Think about if the fact you come in and you're only going to get $500 your first year. Well, it's only $500, but maybe you play really hard, you work really hard, and a full scholarship opens the next year or a much bigger percentage scholarship opens up the next year. If you sign that four-year $500 deal, you really hurt yourself. So I don't think the lower tier sports, again, are going to impact it that well, but I do see your football players, your basketball players and such, you know, inking to those deals quite often. Yeah, and I think another important factor, guys, is uh, it doesn't mean you could ignore having the conversation about what happens if I get injured. What are the academic expectations? Those are really important because the majority of you won't be signing multi-year scholarships. You'll be signing the one-year commitments, and you need to know what happens when you get injured. Uh, so, all right, enough of the NCAA and scholarships. This one is about moms and their impact in recruiting. So two big stories going on this week. One, Landon Collins in last week's Under Armour football game committed to Alabama instead of in-state LSU. And if you've seen the YouTube video, we'll link to it in the show notes, but his mom was less than happy. So, you know, here is this guy going against his mom committing out of state. The other side of the coin, Gunnar Keel, big number one quarterback prospect, had committed to LSU, decommitted from LSU, and is going back home because his mom wanted him closer to home to Notre Dame. So what's going on? What's your take? We all have moms and they all have opinions. And a lot of times those opinions might not match up. Case in point, Landon Collins down at uh, Louisiana number one prospect. He really wanted to go to Alabama, committed to Alabama on national television. His mom obviously threw a bit of a fit. It was quite embarrassing for him because this is something he's worked so hard for. Uh, Gunnar Keel, number one player, Mr. Football in Indiana, Gatorade 2011 uh, football player. He originally, like David said, committed to Indiana, decommitted, committed to LSU, decommitted, and that's because his mom, the day before he's supposed to report, decided that she did not want him going that far away, instead wanted him only 173 miles away, which is about a three-hour drive. 
That's tough. You know, as an athlete, you need to be honest with your parents about what you want out of college. You also need to be honest with them about what, or they should be honest with you about what they want out of college. They need to tell you, hey, we'd like you to stay home because we'd like to be close to you. And then you have to respect that, especially if they're going to be paying for some of your education. Now, granted, these are football players are getting full ride scholarships, but again, not all of you are going to go that route. And so it's really important also that the coaches understand that they should be recruiting the entire family, not just the athlete. And, you know, Urban Meyer is one of the best recruiters in the country. He is a huge proponent of recruiting families. He recruits parents, he recruits siblings, and he recruits the athletes. So it's a whole family dynamic there gets everyone involved in the decision making. So just make sure you're talking to your parents about what your thoughts are on your recruiting process at all points in times. Exactly. I think you just got to make sure, have the conversation before you commit to a school and have to decommit. Nobody likes that process. It's messy. It drops your value as a recruit. So just engage with your family early in the recruiting process and avoid these types of situations. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, awesome Twitter question coming from Big Sap Does It. He asked, he goes, if you're a junior in high school and you're trying to get coaches to notice you, where do you start? Well, Big Sap Does It, basically what you need to do is start now. You know, it's all about making sure that the coaches know who you are. You can't sit back and hope that they're going to find out who you are because you're a great athlete or any other reasons. You have to go out, find the coach's contact information. If you want, use our coach's contact database. Email us. We'll give you contact information. We want to make sure that you understand that it's all about what you can do, not what coaches are going to do for you, but you have to go out and find the school, find the coach's contact information, call them, email them, pester them, tell them that you want an opportunity to get to know them, not to get a scholarship, to get to know them. They know why you're contacting them. Yeah, that's true. It's really, really easy to start. Find the email, find the phone, contact the coach. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, just want to get a sense. Big weekend here on the West Coast. 49ers fans, lots of them in the office, taking on the Giants for the NFC Championship. Uh, what are you going to be doing this weekend? I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing just about the same thing that everybody in the Bay Area is going to be doing, and that's watching the 49ers play the Giants, hoping for a bit of a win on this side so uh, everyone can celebrate maybe a Super Bowl trip. Agreed. Same thing. I'll be at home watching the game. And uh, Alex Smith, one more week. That's all I need out of him. <laughs> he has had one heck of a season. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Listen, if you want to contact us, you can. You know, our Facebook tag is just Athnet. Twitter tag is at Athnet. If you want to talk to David and I personally, these are our personal Twitter tags, at jzimmy67 and at David R. Frank. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend.